We're getting ready to get started. Uh, as always, thank you all for being down here today. Um, the way we're going to do this, uh, Coach Stock uh, will go first. Uh, he'll be able to answer any of your questions that you may have about the upcoming season. Uh, and then we'll have uh, both of our coordinators up here. And then after that, we'll bring up the student athletes. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Coach Stock still. And, and please raise your hands so we have a microphone that we'll send around for your questions. Thanks. All right, uh, really appreciate everybody uh, coming out here today, especially with the weather the way it is. So uh, really appreciative of you guys taking the time to come here. Um, this is an exciting time, you know, for all college uh, fans, coaches, uh, players across the nation. But it's an exceptionally exciting time for us and getting this season started. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us uh, with the opportunity to be in a different conference than what we've been in. But it's also a great challenge uh, with the schedule that we play, the new teams that we're playing. But uh, any competitor at any level or any sport will tell you that that's what really uh, stokes their fire. That's what motivates them uh, when you're challenged, when your uh, people kind of doubt you or don't think that you can be quite as good as what you think you can be. So uh, we've got a great, uh, I like the attitude of our team right now. We've got a great sense of urgency. Uh, haven't been around them much, you know, other than seeing them in the locker room and in the hallways uh, this summer. But I like their attitude. I like their mindset. I think it's critical uh, that we keep the edge, that we keep the, the chip on our shoulder that uh, the team last year played with. And I, and I thought there was uh, that edge, that chip was still there through January and February, our off-season conditioning, through spring practice, and then uh, this summer and talking to our guys and how they've prepared so far this summer. But I'm really excited about it. Uh, you know, it's... When August gets here and you start, you get out on the grass and you start practicing and uh, you're around the guys, it seems like it's been forever since we've really been able to be around our guys because of the summer rules that you have with, uh, with football. So, uh, again, I'm really, really excited about it. I like our team. Um, I'll answer any questions you have about our team and where we are right now. Coach, the last several years, you've kind of already known what you're up against, the expectation-wise and the opponents and all of that. How does that change not knowing a lot of the opponents that you have this year? Well... Not, not a whole lot, Adam. I think the big thing is uh, by the time we get into our conference schedule, uh, FA used the first one, and, and we've played them for you know the last eight years, seven years. So we have a good feel for them. Uh, by the time we get into the rest of them, we'll have played. They will have played three or four games, so you'll have a good idea of what to expect. I think all that unknown right now is a little premature because we don't play them 
Uh, we don't play East Carolina. We don't play Marshall. We don't play UTEP. We don't play Southern Miss and UAB till later in the year. So our main focus is, is Western Carolina, and I know it's coach cliche. I know it's coach talk, but uh, these next 29 practices are going to be focused solely on uh, you know Western Carolina, but. I think the unknown will take care of itself by the time we get to them. You talked about kind of the something to prove sort of thing. Last year that was obvious. Coming off 2-10, and ten, it seemed the team was motivated all year by that to prove people wrong. What's the something to prove this year? Is it the conference affiliation? Is it the bowl snub? What's, what's that? That chip you talk about on the shoulder. You know, I, I think, you know, every year you have to have the mindset of that the, the you got, you've got something to prove not only to yourself as an individual player, as an individual competitor, but, but at, and as a team. And, and that we had something to prove in 10, we had something to prove in 9, we had something to prove in 8, 7, and 6. We probably just didn't talk about it in the media. Uh, you know, so this isn't just something that, you know, something to prove a chip on our shoulder the last two years. It's always been there. I think, you know, it's got to be there every year in whatever sport you play. Uh, I think the motivation has to come, not has to come, but a lot of the motivation, you have to be a self-motivated athlete. You have to have goals uh, as an individual. You have to be self-motivated to be the best you can be every day. And then it's our responsibility as coaches to get that little extra out of you that that you might not have or you, you may not know you have uh, to push and drive you to be the best you can be. But to me, you have to. It's just something that you have every day that that mindset to being great. That I'm gonna go out there every day to be the best I can be and prove uh, prove to this team that I deserve to be the first team player, wide receiver, running back, offensive lineman, defensive end, whatever position you play, prove that you deserve to be number one. You create competition uh, within your team that the number two guy, he's trying to prove he's better than the number one guy. So, uh, you know, the bowl snub last year, the new conference of affiliation, all that stuff, I think is, is you know, peripheral stuff on the outside that people uh, will talk about. Uh, you know, I, I know inside that we just want to, we want to prove that we're good enough to win this conference. That's our mindset. And that's kind of my follow-up. The Sun Belt has compared itself to Conference USA for years. You were eight and four last year in the Sun Belt. Can you are you a contender this year in year one? If you ask me that today, I'm gonna to say yes because that's that's our goal. We want to win this championship, and uh, I don't want to wait and see, you know, halfway, we get halfway through the schedule or season and say, hey, we we got a chance to be pretty good. We might be, have a chance to win this thing or, no, we're not very good. It's going to take some time. Uh, you know, our mindset going in is is to, to win every game we play, to, to sit up here and – Whenever we finish the end of November, the first of December, that we're 12 and 0 and playing for the conference championship, 
And uh, so that's going to be our goal and our mindset. Are we good enough to do that? Uh, we'll find out. A couple of personnel questions. Uh, J.D., Rodney, Marcus, any update on those They're, they're still uh, suspended from the team. Is, does that mean – what does the suspension mean? Does that mean that they won't practice, they won't lift weights, that sort of thing? Yes, they won't. Uh, they won't have. They won't report tomorrow. When we report uh, uh, on reporting day, we start practice on Friday. Uh, you know, they're suspended from the team. They won't. They won't be in any meetings. They won't be at any practices. They won't be on the sideline watching practice. Is that pending till a certain date, or do you have any kind of timetable on if anything will change one way or the other for that? Uh, I'd say it's very uh, fluid, you know. Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm still, you know, uh, trying to let as much as like everybody that was involved in it uh, have their say so. Uh, you know, let the proper people here on campus uh, continue their uh, evaluation of the situation. And, uh, Continuing, continuing to gather thoughts and uh, facts on the on the whole deal. So, yeah, I, I mean, it could it could drag on. It could not drag on. Does your decision is it pending on what happens legally? Does your decision is that affected by what happens legally? Charges no, sir. dropped or charges any of that? No, sir. You make your decision independent of whatever that is. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. And one more question on that. There's a video out there. Have you seen the video? Yes, sir. Any reaction to what you saw? Or I've, you got, not... I've got my thoughts on it, but I'm not allowed to because it is in police. So you feel like just seeing the video, you can't make a determination on them? Feel I can't? L yeah, long term. No, I feel I can. But you haven't yet. Because it ha they haven't done, when I say they, the proper authorities haven't done a thorough, their thorough evaluation of the whole, you know, situation. So I wanted to get, you know, I've heard one side of the story, uh, you know, and I'm letting the authorities get the other side of the story. A separate personnel question. You had a question during the spring at center. Uh, Jalen Hunter, I think that's a new offensive lineman in. Is that a possibility, or what are you going to do at center, and what can Jalen give you? Well, I thought Nick Nunez – uh, really had a good spring, and I thought uh, he got better each day. So I feel good about Nick going into uh, Friday's practice, going into August, going into camp about Nick. Uh, I don't think you can, you know, Josh is going to be there at left guard. Darius is going to be there at left tackle. You know, I think we've got a lot of other guys that can play multiple positions. You know, Jesse's been a center. If he gets healthy, he's been a guard. He's been a tackle. We've got some flexibility that we can move people around. Jalen, you know, he hadn't even practiced yet. So we'll see what he can do, you know, once he gets out there. But, uh you know, uh, I thought Josh Chester for a young guy came on through the spring. Uh, you know, I, I think we've got some, you know, Jadarius has played guard. He's played tackle. 
you know, we even looked at Isaiah, you know, or talked about Isaiah going in there at center at one time. Uh, you, you've got to have a good plan, and, and uh, Jeep Coach Wade has done a good job of moving those guys around, you know, and find, in case somebody does go down, that there is some flexibility that we can move guys around. Coach, it seems like just yesterday you walked on the campus as an unknown. Now we blink our eyes well, and we're unknown. talking about 06, 07, all these wins, the new conference. Talk about the stock still legacy that you're creating, or, or is, that a th is that a thought that you ever think about? Let me turn my phone on make sure I get this recorded. Uh, my legacy, I, it's I, I don't have a leg. It's about these players. It's about these coaches. I don't. Uh, I'm proud of what we've accomplished. I'm not satisfied with what we've accomplished. Uh, I still have a strong desire, a hunger to to get better and to continue to move this program forward. It's not just me. Uh, it's everybody involved, but more more so than anybody, it's the players. Uh, those are the guys that lay it on the line every day, and I've got a tremendous amount of respect and appreciation for them and what they've done. But uh, you think about where we are now and where we were, you know, seven years ago. Uh, I'm proud of what we've accomplished, uh, but there's a heck of a lot more out there on that plate. And, uh, you know, I'm going to keep striving to get better every day. Local boy Jeremiah Bryson, what kind of piece is he to the offensive puzzle this year? You know, Jeremiah – he can help us. Um, I thought he was better this spring than he was in the fall. And last fall was the first time he played, you know, since high school. You know, so because he, he redshirted that year, and there's always, you know, adjustments that you make as a young player, as a young athlete, and he's still young. Uh, Jeremiah gets better every day. Uh, I think there's a, uh, a greater sense of maturity, dependability, and consistency uh, in Jeremiah so far. Uh, from this spring to now than what there was in the fall. So if he'll continue to exhibit and improve in those areas, I think he can have a huge uh, role in this offense because he's a, you know, he, he's a guy that uh, is good in the passing game. He can catch the ball. He's, he's got some juice. He's got some wiggle to him. Uh, as a running back, so I think he can help us in the kicking game. So there's a there's a place for Jeremiah if he'll stay focused and um, keep his eye on what's ahead of him. How much does it ha help having in the passing game? You've got Logan back. You've got a couple of receivers back. We've got some plenty of experience. And how much does that help balance the fact that you are having to replace in the, in the backfield a guy like uh, Benny? Well, I, I think it's, it's critical. And, and, you know, probably halfway through the season when Benny got hurt last year, the, I guess the sixth game against FIU, we also lost Marcus Henry, a starting receiver in that game, to a broken ankle. We lost Tavares Jefferson after 
I mean, he played a few snaps in the McNeese game, uh, was but basically was hurt all August. Then we had another receiver get hurt. So, you know, we lost three receivers, you know, probably from the fifth game on, sixth game on. Uh, you know, and that had an impact on our offense. Uh, you know, now getting Tavares back and and he's here and you'll talk to him, but I think he's in the best shape that he's been in since he's been here. Uh, you know, Kyle Griswold has played now. He'll be a, you know, a third, th three-year starter for us. Uh, Christian Collis was a redshirt freshman that, you know, played and started last year. He's back. We signed a couple junior college guys that we're here in the spring that will be able to help us. I think we've got more weapons outside for Logan, you know, receiver than we had, you know, from the halfway point on last year. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, and then I think Logan has matured and improved greatly as a quarterback also going into his senior year. So it gives you a comfort level as a coach that you've got some senior wide receivers out there. You've got a senior quarterback. Uh, you've got a Jordan Parker who this time last year we were planning on redshirting and he rushed for 850 yards, uh, you know, last year. So we've got some quality backs in the backfield to where we don't have to just rely on Logan or the passing game to win a game. So as a coach, it gives you a great comfort level. Rick, two part with the move to the Conference USA and. I'm sure you're already doing interviews and things with in, in the other cities. Number one, what do you feel like the perception of Middle Tennessee is to the league? And in your mind, what is the perception of Conference USA and what uh, and how how are you able to take that and use that in what you guys are doing? From a recruiting as as well as as a, as a preparation standpoint. Well, I think probably within the league, within the coaches, um, there's great respect uh, for for us as a football program. Um, you know, they picked this third or fourth, we as coaches voted on that. Uh, somebody in there thought we, uh, some coach thought we were the, would win it, got it, we got one vote. So I think there's uh, great respect from within the coaching, the coaches in this conference towards us. Outside the fans, the other players of the other teams, I, I don't know what their perception of us is. I know Conference USA is nationally perceived in a very positive light. I mean, there's great respect for Conference USA nationally. If there wasn't, you wouldn't have six guaranteed bowl slots. You wouldn't have... Uh, the TV packages that you have with Fox and CBS and the other networks, you wouldn't have the financial revenue that we're going to gain from being in Conference USA if there wasn't great respect nationally. Uh, it's helped recruiting. Last year we recruited on two months. You know, uh, so basically our recruiting was done when we went into Conference USA in December. Uh, I think you're seeing a, 
a bigger impact now. We're seeing a bigger impact now in recruiting when you throw Conference USA uh, behind your name as compared to the Sun Belt. We've got uh, nine commitments now. We've never had, you know, nine commitments in July. You know, so I, I think nationally it's, uh, you know, from a perception-wise, it's helped us in recruiting also. And uh, hopefully it'll help us get an indoor facility also with this rain coming down. Coach, what was your impressions of the uh, media days in Irving, Texas with this? Conference USA, the first time you've been there? Yeah, we had our media days for Conference USA last week in Dallas. I thought it was highly organized, very professional. Uh, the people you dealt with from the, from the radios uh, to the TV stations to the you know, the, the TV contract networks with Fox and CBS, everything that you did was first class, uh, highly organized, very professional. Glad to be a part of it. Hey, Coach, when the uh, team gets together tomorrow, what would your message be about any off-the-field distractions and how to stay focused moving into this new conference and beginning of the season well, of 29 days? Larry, if, if that message never changes. It doesn't matter moving into a conference, but uh, as a coach, you just – continue to emphasize the importance of doing the right thing all the time and that you represent uh, something more than just yourself. And, uh, you know, you represent your family name. And I talk to them all the time about never doing anything to embarrass your family's name. And it starts there. And then you don't want to do anything that will embarrass uh, this university and this football program. Uh, and if you do, you're going to have a hard time surviving But uh, in this program. But uh, I talk to them all the time about it. You know, I, I say – Ask, ask these guys when they come up if they've ever heard me say, you know, I want them to make sure they graduate. I want to learn. I want to help them learn how to be a good husband and learn how to be a good father and a good son and being a good person and, and all those things. And you know, uh, we've got a lot of great guys in this program. Sometimes. Uh, somebody steps out of line and you try to do everything you can to help and educate them uh, where they don't make that mistake again. But uh, in this day and time, and especially as a football coach, when you've got 110, 115 guys that you're responsible for, um, you know, there sometimes you're going to have guys step out of line, but uh, I take it personally. Uh, it, it crushes me uh, when somebody messes up. Because I, I always question myself if there's something else I could have done to talk to them to to help them not make the mistake that they made. So the message doesn't change. It'll be the same. And it's not just on reporting date, Larry. It's every, I mean, it's, I, I talk as much about that as I do 